everybody this is Damon Bungard with Regara and I was out hunting a little public land Tennessee backcountry with the Mountain 2.0 and look at that got a buck on the ground now I am out there I don't know exactly how far the truck is uh, it's up there a few hundred feet of vertical a few miles to get out of here so I have a deer to get in a backpack a lot of people have asked me over the years, all right, well, you backcountry hunt, you backpack hunt, how do you get your deer out? Well, I use the gutless method. So I thought today might be a good day to film doing the gutless method on that guy. So basically I got him, he fell kind of in this thick in this thicket, uh, called him out, shot him at 20 yards right in the throat and dropped in his tracks. And now I got to get him out of here. So. I got my game bags, I got my pack emptied, and I'm gonna get the knives out and start working on them. So, basically, and he's just kind of a, a, a funky little public land buck. What's crazy about him is he's got he's got no brow tines. This is the second buck I've killed in this area that doesn't have brow tines. This side's a weird, like kinked out, kind of knobby fork. Anyway, I'm going to cut his rack off to make him into another set of rattling antlers because that kind of brow tines makes good rattling sets. Um, but the guts method, the way, it, the way it basically works is I'm going to do, the first cut that I'll do will be down his back right here. So right down the center of the spine all the way to the tail. Now if I were caping him, for a shoulder mount, I'd actually do that same cut and let, let the taxidermist sew it up. But I would cut that and then I would go mid body and keep it going. But in this case, uh, I'm just gonna be cutting his rack off. And so I'm gonna cut down the length of the back right there. Then I'm gonna peel that hide down towards his feet. And that'll let me then get the shoulder off, get the back straps off and get his rear ham off and get them in the game bags. And I'll go ahead and debone him, uh, and then I'll roll, basically roll him over, and then I'll do the same thing on the other side. So I'll kind of rig this camera up onto a tree here, uh, so you can kind of see the cuts as they happen. And I'll, I'll I'll use wood and rocks around here to lay some meat out, or I'll hang them up in trees where I can. But uh, anyway, let's start cutting a deer up. After that back cut is made, now I can basically just grab and peel. So I'm going to take this whole side down off the hang off the hind quarters, expose the back straps. shoulders up front here. And then because I'm not worried about the cape, I'm just going to cut around his head and expose that neck to get the neck roast off.
Now, you're gonna wanna leave evidence of sex, so on the hams, I'll leave part of the testicles. For now, I'm just gonna come down the back of the ham. You can see, I'd like to keep the hide. It'll wanna roll up on itself, kind of, but you can prevent that and then it gives you a nice work surface now, these river rocks behind me they'll make a nice work surface too and I'll use uh, I'll use dead logs and lay meat on and stuff like that but since it was a frontal shot it's gonna be very little meat loss maybe a little bit of neck I'm just gonna continue and split this down until this whole side is bare and I'll split that hide to go all the way around the legs. All right, so now you can see one side is, is basically peeled. So I split right up the spine, exposing the back and I peeled it down. I cut around, cut around the ham, exposed half the belly and cut around the front shoulder. Next, so next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull the shoulder off, then I'll pull the back strap off, then I'll pull the rear ham off, and I'll hang them up in trees or lay them on rocks before I debone those to get them in game bags. But next up, let's lay out some game bags. These tag bags I got, used them for the first time on a caribou hunt many, many, many years ago, and then I've had them since for Alaska, and they come in different shapes and sizes but i like these longer ones you can actually pretty much fit a whole deboned deer in one of those but i'll just separate out uh one for each side and then uh this is like a tenderloin bag a little smaller bag and i'll put the the back straps and the tenderloins in that one so i'll just kind of lay these out usually so they're so they're handy but I'm gonna lay I'm gonna lay some of the quarters up onto rocks and some logs around here uh, that before, so I can debone it. But first, all right, let's time for this front shoulder to come off. And the front shoulder is really easy. Uh, there's nothing connecting it except for tissue, so you just cut around the shoulder blade here, lift up and peel. Voila. Shoulders off. And I'm just gonna lay this for now back here on this rock. I'll deep bone it here in a second. So now once that shoulders off, I've kind of exposed some of the brisket meat uh, and you can see the, the back strap under here. Um, so there's silver skin covering the back strap so you can, you can kind of cut that away and there's your back strap nicely exposed spine is there you can see and the back strap within you're right there under it Switch to my Havilon now. Do some of the more delicate cuts with it. Nice big back strap there. Now after the ham is off and all of this, yes, we will still get the inside tenderloins out, and I'll show you how. You basically do a small slit, and you can reach inside the rib cage there and get your tenderloins out. So first, let's get the back straps. All right, now the back strap is exposed here. And it's pretty easy to, basically, I like to cut it from the, you'll feel this front bone of the rear hip. 
and then roughly there's the end of the neck row so you can just kind of cut there feel the spine and cut along in along the edge of the spine there it's kind of follow that edge all the way down and that'll separate and you can kind of get in there and feel the ribs but I like to go in from the top here you'll find this edge along the top of the rib cage and then you can kind of just work your way back exposing that back strap as you go this is obviously one of the best cuts of meat on the whole deer, so take your time. You can see how that separates nicely. So between that one cut there and this cut here, it'll separate nicely all the way back. Keep it up out of the dirt with your non-cutting hand. And then when, you, when I get to right there, that's when I then, right at that pelvic bone, do my cut. And one beautifully separated back strap. See where that came off, and I'm just going to drop that right into the back strap bag. Get it starts cooling. It's it's in the 40s today and cloudy, so I'm not not too concerned about meat, really. Um, so now we got front shoulder off, back strap off. Uh, you can see the ribs there exposed. This is actually the tenderloin trying to poke through, but we'll deal with that last. But it's right here. Um, and then let's get that rear ham off. All right, so the rear ham, what I like to do, I've already cut a little stick over here on a tree, it's sticking out. I'll, I'll cut the, the leg with the, with the tendon hole right there so I got something to hold on to. But I'm just gonna come around, separate yourself right there at the pelvis down the back. And you can feel that pelvis bone cut around give yourself something to lift as you come underneath it's gonna work your way around the pelvis bone you got to find the joint on the inside the socket and when you will you'll know it when you when you get to it but it'll pop and the more you pry up there I just Getting close, separating. You're gonna want want to watch not to cut in too deep and risk getting into any of the guts. But and there's that pelvis bone. You can follow it around. It's getting really close to wanting to break. I can see the here it just separated. Don't worry about a little bit of dirt and stuff getting on there. It'll come off. Socket and separate. I'm using the same handle. I'm just going to stick it on this tree. 
because I'm going to debone this before I get it in game bags. It'll hang there and cool. There you can see the edge of the pelvic bone. I got it poked a little bit, let some guts out, but there's the ball and socket. Now I'll take the neck roast off quick. And for that, I like to just cut through the brisket, cut along the edge, down the, down the spine, somewhere to how you do a back strap. And then there's a lot of just connective tissue in the neck roast. I usually just stew this. Now I'll just go into one of the bags to start cooling. All right, so we got bulk of neck, and you can get you you can work off extra extra straps, and if, if you want extra strips, and if you want uh, to pull some of the brisket off or burger, uh, depending on the size of the buck, you know you can. We'll pick at this. I won't do that in the video, but we'll pick at it. But, but there's the bulk cuts: neck, front shoulder, back strap, rear leg, and now we will work on getting the tenderloin out. So I'll bring the camera down close for this one. All right, so the best way to find the tenderloin is to follow the rib cage down. So there's where you took the back strap off. And then the ribs kind of end. And then they become the short ribs. So the long ribs here, now we're into the short ribs. That's the front. So this hole that I'm making my finger, that's the tenderloin trying to pop its way through. So you can actually just kind of tear it away and it's kind of wanting to come out on its own, but there's, there it is. So basically, I'm gonna take, you can do a lot of it just with your finger, but I'm gonna use the Havilon. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sneak up in here under the rib cage, separate that out more. I'm gonna push the guts back and then be able to extract it. So I'll kind of carefully cut underneath here. This is the stomach, so you want to be real careful not to get it. But there, I got the front separated. I'm going to go up under the rib cage there, each direction. And then you can kind of work your way back and forth. And you can eventually get to where you can feel all the way around it. You can kind of get it to tear away. I'm missing, I lost a little bit of it there, but I'll get it back. All right, tore a little bit, but. There's tenderloin now. And okay, so now we're ready to put that in the in with the back strap. And we're basically done on this side, aside from just some little cleanup pieces. So I'll do that. Then I'm gonna flip the deer over, peel the other side. All right, now that, he, now that he's spun around, I'm gonna do just like I did before. I'm just gonna grab hide and peel that hide away, all the way around to expose this whole side. All 
right, so this side is now peeled. And now I'll just repeat similar steps. Step right out the shoulder. Same method. It's a lot easier with a sharper knife. Laid on the same rock. Now back strap again, it's ex it's covered right now, so expose it. Get that silver skin off of it. that pretty piece of meat. Looks like that's part of my bullet. Uh-oh. Might have messed up a little back strap, but that's the entry hole. I shot it in the neck frontal. It was looking at me 20 yards away. Oh, I'll take that off. Take the rear ham off. Same way as before. Gonna wedge this one in the tree back here and deal with it later. Okay, so now we're back to the tenderloin, which again, follow the ribs. There they end. Here it begins. You can see the edge of it there. Once again, very delicately trying not to pop any of the stomach. There's less pressure now that I've gotten half of it off, but I'm using my fingers to separate it. Side pulled. Get to get in the front side. There we go. Another tender line. Into the bag you go. Okay, so here now you can kind of your call. If you want to go in and get heart, get liver, you can open up the rib cage. You can just separate. You can just slice into the rib and pull it apart to access that stuff i'll probably get the heart out for treats for jaeger um if it's not shot up the bullet should have missed it uh and then if you want rib meat and, and you're picking apart other little bits but i'm about to run out of, out of battery life and run, run out of camera card space so i'm gonna stop but i'm gonna debone everything now put it into those game bags and then load it in the pack here I'll show you how you can separate the ribs, loosen it a little bit, and in this case, I was able to get the heart out okay, intact. Uh, lungs are shot up. And, uh, anyway, there's how you can get inside and get to any organs if you want them. Here's how I'll improvise and find ways to hang meat on the quarters. So this is just a wedge of a tree. That works pretty good. Here I just left a little stick coming off the side of the tree. And that ham is hanging there. I'll let that cool, keep cooling for a bit. Or river rocks. But the shoulders look good. So now I'm just going to 
take all the all the meat off the bones all the steaks the shoulder steaks and different cuts cut all that weight out of the pack and get to work here's kind of the scene of it all there's plenty of videos out there about how to debone different quarters so i'm not going to really get into that but i'll just say you know just get clever with how you hang it um in this case this is one of the hams i've taken half the ham off now i'm finding the femur getting around it and that'll be the bulk of this cut into a bag All the meat is hanging and now it's time to just load it in the pack and hike our butts on out of here all right well it's been about two hours now since i shot them all cleaned up processed in the pack now, comes the act. Gotta get it on. Oh. Get it cinched nice and tight. Oh. Yeah. We can start our hike out. Hope that was helpful. Any questions, please feel free. Comment below. Happy to answer them. It's been about two hours, like I said, since I shot them. Rain's gonna be moving in soon. Hope to be home by dinner time. Get him in the fridge. See ya. No, Jaeger. Well, we're home now. Time for the meat to go into meat trays. Jaeger's doing a little helping, a little meat inspector here. Sorry, bud, you didn't get like, help on this one. No tracking needed. Time to go in the fridge.